Let's do it, party people. We got lots to cover, lots going on in Dallas-Fort Worth real estate this week and every week. Lots going on in the minds of home buyers, home sellers, home owners. What is true right now? What's going on with inflation and interest rates and buyer demand and sellers and the holidays and all the things? We'll get into all of that as we make our way through the show. But before we do that, we must, must acknowledge pro tip, holiday turkey tip from Lyndon, listener Lyndon, who sent us a generous and kind and thoughtful suggestion. Uh, last week's show, uh, Thanksgiving discussions about turkey preferences uh, uh, led to Lyndon calling in and making sure that we knew one very important tip is to turn the burner off before you drop your giant turkey into the vat, or as my friend this weekend said, cauldron of uh, boiling oil, flammable boiling oil. I mean, it. Whoop, whoop. It seems uh, obvious in hindsight. I'm going to be but, honest with you. It's not as obvious as it sounds because when you're managing all the things, right. like you got to get the fire going, you got to get the oil burning, you got to get it to the right temperature, not too hot, not too cold. We did one the, the over Thanksgiving. We used a laser thermometer to check the temp okay. of the oil instead of like a giant, and you don't really trust it quite as much. There's a lot going on, and you're worried about burning the house down because everybody's told you you can do that. I would imagine lots of people are clear on don't put a frozen turkey in there, but probably don't think to shut the burner off so that when the turkey goes in, if oil comes over the side, you don't have a raging inferno. And then turn it back on. Well, so, look, I just want to thank <clears throat> Lyndon for looking out because I think it's a hot tip. And lots of people are burning their decks. Hot tip. I see what you did there. So Listen, hey, number one, thanks for tuning in, Lyndon. We appreciate you. That's what my daughter says now. She thinks it's really funny. Yeah. Instead of being like, love you, she's like, appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty cute. The tweens. Yeah. So anyway, hey, thanks, Lyndon, for tuning in. Thanks for the turkey tip. Keep them coming. Let us know if you got any. If, it, if Listen, if we miss anything else, let us know. Please. Not necessarily in the YouTube comment type of way, but in the generous friend and community member type of way. So uh, you are listening to DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. I'm Todd Tremonti. Full price Courtney. CCC, Triple C, in studio with microphone, producer extraordinaire. I'm here Of all today. things, audio, video, and digital. Making it happen. Go to TodTremontyTeam.com. You can find out most of what producer Courtney's doing. You can access the videos. You can access the audios, the YouTube, the show, all the things. You can also search every house for sale by every agent in the MLS here in DFW. You can find out if you're ready to buy, ready to sell. You can get a cash offer. You can check your home equity, check your property value and a whole bunch of other things, all online at touchyourmoneyteam.com. All right, we got a full slate today, Courtney. I've made promises that we would get into what's going on in the market. We might even address inflation and rates and all the things. What do you have for yeah, us? Yeah, I think that we need to open the show with just a market update. I mean, the, there's high mortgage rates that are currently impacting U.S. home builders, leading to more price cuts to attract buyers. And there's cautious optimism about potential future drops in interest rates. And this is a report from the National Association of Home Builders and the Wells Fargo housing market for November. It showed a decline of six points to 34, indicating a negative outlook. So I just, like this is marking the fourth consecutive month of decline, reaching its lowest since the end of last year. And uh, like, what is this? This change combined with the scarcity of existing home inventory might lead to increased housing demand and potentially more positive views from builders in December. I mean, I don't, you know, the, it, this data is suggesting improving conditions for home construction in the coming months. I mean, how are people feeling at the what? end of the year? They feel like little John. What? They have no idea what to feel. A lot, a lot of movement. What? Literally, just everyone's kind of going, "What? I, uh, what?" So basically, that data is super mixed and conflicting, right? So you have negative reports, which, by the way, negative gets more attention. So you're almost always going to see more negativity. And to be honest, you know, it's the way of the world now. I will get your attention more if I'm like, "Warning, don't do this," as opposed to like, "Hey, I've got a good tip for you." Uh, it's the same information, but the reality is. I believe 
locally in DFW, there's more reason for optimism than pessimism right now. Now, the data that you're reading is some pessimistic data around the rate at which property values are rising, right? So the rate, how fast property values are going up, they're going up still, but they're going up slower. They're going up less and less, you know, not less and less, but like instead of 2021, where we went up like 1% or more every month, this year we're looking at maybe 4% increase for the whole year, which by the way is about our traditional growth rate. So we're kind of back to boring normal, which is good in a lot of ways. The thing that's been really hard and bad is the other part that you read, which about interest rates. Interest rates got up to as high as they've been in 20 years. They've slipped back down a little bit. We've actually seen some real optimism the last two weeks about people that are able to get into the sixes instead of into the sevens on their mortgage rate. High sixes, let's be honest, but high sixes is better than high sevens. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have all these projections, National Association of Home Builders, National Association of Mortgage Brokers, National Association of Realtors. And then, of course, you have banks and lending institutions and all these things. And all their predictions are generally the same. There's a couple of outliers. Uh, you know, Fannie Mae is saying that rates will stay really, really high and barely go down. And then the Mortgage Brokers Association is probably on the other end that's like probably the most optimistic saying we could be down into the fives by the middle of next year. But just about everybody else is kind of in the middle saying we were in the high sevens. We'll probably see high sixes by the end of the year. We're already there. And then by uh, second quarter next year, we might see low sixes. Generally the, all the predictions except for those two outliers are kind of saying you know, we could see a two percentage point reduction um, by mid to late next year, which is massive. Absolutely massive. When you're thinking about if you bought a house this year at seven something and you could be at five something or low sixes, you're going to refinance. I mean, you are absolutely going to go refinance and save hundreds of dollars a month. Or if you're really optimistic and you believe some of those outliers that say we could be into the fives, you're going to hold on for dear life and maybe wait that out. We'll talk about that later when we get into more of that. But as far as me giving my read on all that information, just for Dallas-Fort Worth, for our friends, neighbors, listeners, viewers here, I believe now is actually a really favorable time to sell and buy. Let me tell you why really quickly, and then we'll come back to it a little bit later in the show and we can unpack it some more. Uh, it's a good time to sell because values are still going up and they're as high as they've ever been. And because there's a little bit more optimism for buyers than there has been for about a year and a half. Those are two good crossroads. Values are strong and buyers aren't as angry as they were. There's a little more optimism with some downward rate movement and some projections for more downward rate movement. So that's not like the perfect recipe of all time, but we are still seeing the highest prices of all time. That's a very good thing for sellers. On the buy side, I obviously just mentioned it. There's more optimism for buyers right now than there has been for a year and a half or so. And that's because there's a belief that while prices are still going up, they're going up a lot slower. So you could buy a home now, the value will still go up, but you might be looking at an opportunity to refinance in the next year or two back down into some pretty attractive mortgage rates. So the timing on that is pretty darn good both ways. It's most uniquely different for buyers compared to the last 18 or 19 or 20 months. Um, and basically, I think that's what that data says in the way that it relates to Dallas-Fort Worth. Our values are still going up, slower than they were, but about the normal traditional average. And there's reason to believe as a buyer that now would be a better time to buy than next year. Because if rates are already down to low sixes next year, you're going to be competing with way more buyers and more confident, less likely to negotiate sellers. And you're going to end up having to pay more for the house. Even if your rate is lower, you are going to have to fight for those houses again. And, you know, be careful what you wish for. If you wish for the 2021 real estate market because rates were lower, then what comes with that is a massively competitive market where you're having to pay way more for the house, even if it is at a lower rate. So, that's what I think that data says for us. Well, what are your thoughts on them saying that inventory is low and <clears throat> new builds? 
Inventory is low, and I believe inventory is going to be low for another decade. That's what I believe. Mm. Now, look, could that change? Of course it could. If all of a sudden eight big, massive national builders just committed to spending billions of dollars, they could build enough inventory to catch up. But their business models, they won't. Until something really significant and dramatic changes, they haven't, they won't. They didn't during the highest level of demand we ever saw. They could not keep up. We are a growing economy. We are a growing community. If we don't have enough homes, it's going to be a while before we have enough homes. Even with the lower demand that we've had for the last year and a half or two years, they still haven't kept up, mathematically speaking. That's why values haven't gone down. Values go down when there's more houses than people need. Mm. So they're like, well, I got tons of options. You know, and the sellers are like, please buy my house. I'll do you. I'll give you the best deal I can. We're not there. We're not even close. So all that to say, I think inventory is going to continue to be low. And I think home builders benefit when v volume is low because they get more dollars per house. So I think they're going to continue to manage that on the way back up to a little bit more normalcy. But the reality is that's where we are now. If you're thinking about making a move in any of those scenarios, start by having a conversation with Patrick Glaris and his team of mortgage professionals over at Cardinal Financial. Um, you know, you find them online, patrickglaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com, NMLS number 308804. Now, I was texting with Patrick multiple nights this past week. Reason is we're both big fans of Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger and Berkshire Hathaway and their investment approaches. And Charlie Munger passed away this week. Oh, no way. Yeah. 99 years old, investing legend, passed away. And really, for a lot of people, it's been sort of a happy celebration of this financial brilliance. Um, I'm grateful that I went to the shareholder meeting for Berkshire Hathaway this year. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it, but... Another friend of mine and I went and so many of my investing nerd friends were like, dude, that is so cool. It's like the Super Bowl for investing dorks. Um, but I got a bunch of texts this week that were like, man, you made the right call. Like you went the last time you could ever go. Mm -hmm. And that's my buddy and I both, my buddy's single, I'm not, but we like navigated our schedules and like rationalized with work and friends. And I told my wife, I was like, I really think this is the last time we're gonna be, get to be able to sit and listen to Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett just talk. So Patrick and I have been texting each other this week videos of Charlie Munger and his brilliance. And it, he's got a very specific type of brilliance. It's the snarky, I'm smarter than you and you're all idiots. And if you're into that sort of thing, you know, go pay tribute by watching a few Charlie Munger videos this year. I'll just say this because I, I'm a man of faith. Um, I don't, tr I don't follow everything Charlie Munger says, but when it comes to how businesses operate and how value is given and received in the marketplace, I don't know that you'll find a much more accurate, intellectual, and really compelling style of communication to deliver how those things work than Charlie Munger specifically, and then, of course, the hilarious dynamic duo of Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. So, you know, hats off. Um... I don't know that I can celebrate every aspect of his entire life, but certainly from a business financial perspective, uh, someone to be studied. So there you go. PatrickGlaros.com for all your mortgage needs. Patrick's the kind of guy studying how money moves uh, to the nth degree. And that's a lot different than a bank or someone who can get you a mortgage. He's someone that can help you think about how a mortgage and all of your finances work together. PatrickGlaros.com. Todd, what do the holidays mean for real estate? I feel a, I feel a collective lull. I'm really glad you asked this question because this is the attitude of most people right now. Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my God! So there's just like this, it's early still, but there's this welling just excitement and energy. Now, some people have like the negative burdens of holidays and all that, but... There's just this commercial mall and movies vibe of like holidays, 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 holidays. And because of that, there is just less attention for real estate right now. But, and this is the big but that we often give you on this show, but smart people take advantage of that and they go, hey, 
Everyone else is taking their eye off of real estate. Where Where is the opportunity if I lean in? And the answer is, if you're a buyer right now, most other buyers have just hit pause and you're not, you don't have anybody to compete with. If you're a seller right now, you need to be aware that there are just less eyeballs on real estate. There are less feet walking through the doors of real estate. But on the flip side, the buyers that are out there are serious buyers. So you don't have the tire kickers and the looky loos and the people that are just wasting your time scheduling showings and coming to open houses and all that. It's a very efficient time for real estate. Serious buyers, motivated sellers, and agents. By the way, we're looking to hire a few agents right now. So if you want to get into the business, you know, go to the website, tajamaniteam.com, or just text us, 214-310-0008. Agents typically just check out until Valentine's Day. And then they start thinking about, here comes springtime again. But great agents who are full-time and fully dedicated are adding a ton of value for their clients and their prospects and their friends and their neighbors right now. And they're building their pipeline of new opportunity in a season where people are like, yes, I would love to talk about that, but I'm not ready to do anything quite yet. That's okay. Let's add value and nurture and educate. And then we'll dive in. By the way, we can still help you buy and sell right now with the benefits I mentioned a second ago. We can also help you get your ducks in a row so you can come out swinging January, February, or March. As of right now in 2023 going into 2024, I do not recommend that you wait until spring, even if you're buying, selling, or both. So that's kind of what the holidays mean right now is most people stop thinking about real estate. The people that keep thinking about it or lean in typically benefit in a big way. I've said for years and years and years, my wife and I always buy and sell our real estate in the fall and winter. We literally closed on a property this week. So that's, I believe it. I, I live it out. I think you should too. If you have any questions about that or we could help you in any way, call us 214-310-0008 or text us at 214-310-0008 or go online anytime, day or night, on any device you have to toddtremonteteam.com. Well, speak to like the stress of the holidays and like, and, and just the strategy of how our team can help like alleviate that. Cause you're saying that, but I'm thinking I don't have the bandwidth. Yeah. So throughout most of December and all of January, we offer what we call free strategy sessions. Now, most of those are done in person in or near our Fort Worth office, which is, you know, West of Fort Worth, West of downtown Fort Worth or our Richardson office, which is, you know, Northeast Dallas area. Um, we will sit down with you. We will give you our time at no cost, no obligation. You don't have to sign anything if you're not ready to do anything. And we'll give you 45 to 90 minutes to answer your questions, to explain the actual on the ground market conditions, to give you a backstage pass to the MLS, open it up and show you what only brokers and agents see and help you answer some questions, get solid footing, on anything you might want to do real estate related throughout the whole year of 2024. I don't want you thinking you might do something next fall based on bad information or no information or fear or anxiety or uncertainty or any of those things. So we have hundreds, I'm not kidding. We have seven or eight agents on our team. We have hundreds of what we call free strategy sessions during the month of December and January. We set aside every afternoon in January for these and a lot of time in December too, just to go, hey, what would you like to do? You want to buy an investment property? You want to sell your home? You want to move up? You want to downsize? You want to move into 55 plus? You want to buy a second property? You want to develop something? You want to reduce your cost, get rid of your PMI, whatever. We're literally going to sit with you. We'll prepare ahead of time. We'll bring you great resources. Our team produces a forecast for the year. We'll share that with you. Uh, will help you gain more clarity and certainty. Now, you might leave that meeting and go, great, we know what we're going to do three years from now. Or you might leave that meeting and go, oh my gosh, we actually can do what we've been wanting to do and we could do it right now. So we call that a free strategy session. If you'd like to register or sign up for one of those, call or text us right now, right now at 214-310-0008. Just save that in your cell phone. 214-310-0008. 0008. All you have to do is text strategy session and we'll get back to you or call us and we'll get you scheduled with one of our full-time, fully dedicated, full-time 
professional real estate agents. Did I say full time? Because that's kind of important these days. Essential. Full time, fully dedicated, world class real estate pros specializing with only buyers or only sellers in either Fort Worth or Dallas. Now, if you haven't checked your insurance, this is a great time to do that. Kind of an annual look at all of your insurance. That's what I do. That's what I recommend you do. Call DP Lambert at 214-614-8595 or just email him at dp.lambert at goosehead.com. That's dp.lambert at goosehead.com. He was here for Pi Day with his puppy and the puppy stole the show dp.lambert at goosehead.com. Or if you forget all of that, just go to toddtramonteam.com, click the radio tab, and you can find all the people that we talk with here on the show. Speaking of people we talk with on the show in the second half of the show today, we're going to have Jordan from... Um, PMR. Yeah, I was actually looking at the sponsor sheet and for some reason saw <laughs> Goosehead again. No, I'm well aware where Jordan's from. <laughs> we're going to have Jordan from PMR Roofing. And... Uh, I can't say it. I can't you tell them what we need to ask them. Well, Courtney. we, we want to make sure that your roof is ready for Santa's sleigh. So we're going to have Jordan on the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. There are other, we're uh, just trying to be festive. <laughs> there, there are other winter related questions for a roofing professional of the stature of Jordan Collins from PMR roofing. But if you haven't Check your roof. If you don't know the status of your roof as we head into heavy rain, heavy wind, ice, hail, sleet, snow, and all those things, man, that is just risky behavior. It's just unwise. So go to pmrroofing.com. Ask for our buddy Jordan. Tell them we sent you. They'll take great care of you. If you don't need work, they won't do work. If you do need work, they'll do it right. Shake your hand, look you in the eye, and take great care of you the way it should be done. PMR roofing.com. I want to give one more shout out for Keen Landscaping. They came and did the final beds on our new home. It was like the last thing. I can't wait to see We them. built the house. We put the concrete in and we just left those four front beds waiting for like everything. All the craziness is finished. They came in, they blew it out. It really does look good. And the one, I'm kind of a garden orchard guy, but the one thing I don't really know about is like what plants are tolerant to fall winter kind of stuff. A more of a fruiting plant guy, which is all kind of summer focused. And I got to be honest, it looks way better than I thought it would going into the winter. We got some really good looking colorful flowers and some seasonal blooming shrubs that are blooming right now. Got some berry stuff going on out there. It looks pretty freaking good. I got the lights going again. Keen Landscaping. That's K-E-A-N-E. KeenLandscaping.com. Tell them Todd Tremonti sent you. Hey, if you really are thinking about buying or selling or investing in real estate anytime soon, there's so much good and bad information out there. You definitely should sign up for one of our free strategy sessions. And if you're out of market, we can do that by Zoom. It's definitely better in person, but if you're out of the market or you're traveling or whatever, we can do that by Zoom. Just call or text 214-310-0008. And, and just text us strategy or call us and we'll schedule a strategy session. We'll get a little bit of info so we can prepare for that and we'll make sure it's great. And the next half, we'll dive into a little bit more of current market conditions and we'll talk to Jordan Collins about what you need to know about your roof heading into the most brutal, tough roof season of the year. Welcome back, party people. Welcome back. This is my favorite time to buy and sell real estate all year long. Come on in, the water's nice. Uh, this is the time of year where people tend to turn their brain off to real estate, and I tend to lean in. I tend to be that way in lots of areas. Full price, Courtney. Uh, counter to the norm. Um, I feel like if the crowd's running left, I generally want to run right. Uh, and so when other people are not thinking about real estate, the question then is how do we take advantage of that opportunity? in real estate. And I believe the way you do that is to um, look for the unique anomalies, look for the openings uh, of opportunity. And right now, most people are not thinking about real estate. And so there are opportunities for buyers. Uh, there's opportunity, especially for the buyer seller combo mover. Uh, but at the same time, it's still a very good time to sell because we're beginning to see buyers come down off the fence and make decisions again. So um, there's a kind of brief recap of the state of the market we covered earlier in the show. We are going to have our buddy Jordan Collins from PMR Roofing on the show here in a minute. We'll try to get him on the phone. 
Uh, Courtney's got a question to ask him that I just don't think I can verbalize out of my mouth. So we'll let her do that. Uh, but we will talk with him about what you need to do and know about your roof right now. Let's see if we can get him on the line. This is Jordan. Hey, Jordan, Todd Tremonti, man. You're live on the show, DFW Real Estate Weekly, and it's a must that we talk to you because Courtney has a question that I can't even say out loud. <laughs> Jordan, I'm embarrassing uh, Todd to the max, but I'm just trying to be festive, <laughs> and I just, you know think that we need to prep our roofs for Santa sleigh and we only have so much time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Courtney, I appreciate you getting Todd uh, to reach out to me with this. So you're right. We are on limited time uh, as we get, uh, I guess we could call it a Santa certified roof with that. Thank you. You know, you know what I think? Uh, I think you me. should join the ranks of all the other scam roofers and start selling that certification to people. You guys are you guys are Santa Slay certified. Only nine hundred and ninety nine right, right, right. smackers. That's right. Now yeah. we like to uh, remind homeowners this time of year that you know if you have hail damage on your roof, that um, is what hail does is it it causes the granules to come off, and the granules are those little grainy things, and that what uh, protect your roof, and it also makes your roof very uh, slippery, and it's. Um, so it's, uh, if you've got uh, a large jolly fellow with eight tiny reindeer uh, up on the roof, they would need to be careful walking around on that roof. So, or, or like a knucklehead uh, dad trying to hang some Christmas lights that doesn't want to break or, his neck. Uh, yeah, maybe more importantly, a knucklehead dad doing a Christmas vacation uh you know, Listen, Clark Griswold. I, I'm not quite as in on the reindeer certified, but I will salute Clark W. Griswold and for this day and all days. And the Absolutely. answer to the obvious question here is I don't know, Margo. Um, anyway, <laughs> l- l- let me let me ask you this question, because I do I do pound my fist on the desk this time of year when it comes to roofs on this point. Um. I tell people, if you don't know the condition of your roof before winter, you're just playing a dangerous game. You're gambling. And that sounds crazy. I don't sell roofs. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. But if you have, like, if if your house just sat through the brutally hot summer and then through the windy, hot spring, potentially with hail, definitely with some winds and some rain, but now we're about to head into ice, snow, sleet, lots of rain, lots of wind, very cold temperatures, you know, what, what can happen? I mean, I feel like it's the most obvious question ever, but what happens when your house goes, your roof goes through those other seasons and you haven't checked it, you know, what are the things you guys see people running into during the winter months that they wish they had prevented? And that's a, it's a great question. It's something we don't, think about or talk about that often but uh we it it rears its ugly head when um when we have temperatures below freezing and then we have rain which turns into snow which turns into ice and what happens is uh and we thought a couple years ago that you know when that february uh long long freeze uh where we had like three weeks of, of very cold temperatures uh is what happens is you've got hot air that is you know you're you're your heater is, is heating your house and you've got hot, warm air that's going up uh, to the roof. And then we've got, you know, uh, melted snow, ice, that kind of stuff that's coming down the roof uh, because of the heat. And eventually it does melt, but it ends up getting trapped. And that's where you hear the term ice dam. And so is what happens is uh, it refreezes and then... Um, it refreezes on the area that's not heated by your house. So like you'll see it like along the edge, which we call the eaves of the roof. Um, and it's what ends up happening is it stays and stays and stays, and then it starts melting and it finds its way into your house uh, slowly. And so um, that's what we, you know, we see it all the time. And uh, there's lots of, there's things that you can do to prevent it. If you've ever had it before, there's a very good chance you're going to have it again. Yeah. And so r- real quick before, before you go into prevention, cause that's the big, that's the big thing everybody needs. But I just want to point out like when you see your roof or a neighbor's roof and there's areas right. that have like frost and then there's areas that don't, 
that's evidence of what you're talking about, right? Like the heater and Absolutely. the warm air melts one area. And then there's other areas that they don't have that, that heat doesn't reach it or whatever. And then you also have potentially cracks in sealants and maybe even shingles. And then that water fills it and freezes and expands. Like we're, we're familiar with that. Most of us, some of us with concrete, right? Um, yep. Cracks yeah, just get idea. worse because water gets in and it freezes and then the ice expands and breaks it and all that stuff. And it does it over and over and over and over and over again. Well, the, the point you're about to make, I believe is critical. Obviously we all know, Hey, if you've got a major hole in your roof, it's going to leak major. And it's going to be bad. What you're saying though, is these are slow methodical over and over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, you know, minor seepage thing, but it also leads to major. It's not like the roof falls in because a giant piece of hail busted a hole in it. It's over the winter. You have water seeping in with melting and freezing and melting and freezing. And all of a sudden you've got mold in the wall or then a piece of sheetrock caves in or a wall fails or something like that. But it's not all at once. It's happening over time. And that's kind of my point is that you want to prevent it now really quickly how do we prevent that stuff? So we prevent it, first of all, by us taking a look at your roof uh, before this happens and making sure that uh, things like what are called ice and water shields, which is a perfect and easy name to remember, but it's called ice and water shields. It's a peel and stick rubberized membrane. It goes underneath the shingle. It's 100% watertight. Uh, and we put those in all areas that need to be uh, uh, protected, like where ice um, so like valleys or uh, along the edge or where, uh, what we call a dead valley. So um, make sure that's installed. Not every roofer installs that. I can promise you that. It's something that we include on every single roof we do uh, because in order for us to warranty the work long term, we need to make sure we're doing it uh, the right way and with high quality materials. Okay. So first thing to do is, is have us inspect your roof, uh, especially if you've had an ice dam in the past. Uh, and yeah, it's caused to, any damage or it hasn't caused damage. It, it, it still needs to be checked. Yep. We've got about 40 seconds left here, but my, what I tell people is you need to have your roof checked before winter to prevent all of the negativity of, um, wind and hail and sleet and snow and all of these things. And I tell them, if you haven't done that, you're absolutely gambling. So how can folks get a hold of you if they would like to have you and your team check it out and make sure they're not just waiting for a massive problem? No, absolutely. Our, uh, they can call our office, which is 469-409-ROOF, uh, so 409 roof. Or they can call my cell phone, and I will dispatch them to uh, one of our excellent sales guys, uh, most of them who you know and have met. Uh, my number is 214-957-0839. Love it. So get your roof checked out. Don't gamble this winter. If you don't remember all those phone numbers, just go to pmrroofing.com, pmrroofing.com, and make sure you talk to my buddy Jordan. He'll get you taken care of. Love it, love it, love it when we get to talk with folks that we trust uh, and that will shoot you straight and tell you the truth. And even folks that will answer Courtney's ridiculous questions with a straight face he went right into that he leaned in like he was just God, people need to know how to get santa ready on their it. roof thank you jordan uh, pmrroofing.com is how you reach out to jordan and the whole crew at pmr roofing they'll take really good care of you all right what else do the people need when it comes to the real estates well, Todd, like looking ahead at 2024, like what are just in light of our conversation with PMR, like what are some home improvements that people will be glad that they made to like prep their home? All right. So there's some obvious ones and then there's some not so obvious ones. The obvious ones are like, no one's thinking about their air conditioning really right now. People oh, are thinking man. heater furnace, right? Yeah. Cause we, you know. Everyone got that weird Bernie smell you mm -hmm. get when you run your furnace for the first time, probably in the last four or five, six weeks. Um, and so as you head into the new year, I would pencil into my calendar on, you know, late February, uh, trying to get an HVAC person out before it warms up. That's not like an improvement, but it might be if you find out, ooh, this thing doesn't have a lot of time left on it. And you're like, great, what can I do to get five more years out of this thing? Or could I go ahead and replace it before everyone else replaces them and the prices go up? 
The other things that I talk about, because Texas doesn't have these brutal winters. Now, we could have a brutal week or two, but we get to enjoy the outside a lot during the winter. So the home improvements that you could take advantage of right now, especially while a lot of the crews have time and the pricing's a little lower and they could get to jobs a little quicker, um, is the outdoor stuff. You know, I, I harp on that a lot um, late summer to get ready for fall and then late winter to get ready for spring. But the reality is we can enjoy the outdoors year round here. The hardest time is actually summer when it's just so brutally hot that you need a pool or a lazy river to enjoy it. Um, but we really don't have a ton of horrible days in winter. We get some wet, cold, but outdoor stuff could be done. Decks, patios. Um, we actually just put a bocce pit in our backyard. Really, it's just like a big square with some decomposed granite in it. We're calling it a bocce pit. But you could play cornhole, horseshoes, washers, bocce ball, you know, whatever out there. But ultimately, those are the things I think are great. Now, inside, um, any negatives that you have that you want to eliminate, like, you know, damage, holes in the wall, things like that, do those now while you can save a little bit of money and get them done really quickly with uh, the remodeling crews. And then other than that, it's preference. You know, if you want to do some landscaping and things, you know, it's probably a little late in the season, but big trees and things can actually still be done now and they'll root in well before uh, the heat of the summer. I could keep going, but those are the ones that come to mind. No, that's great. And I, uh, I think that those are really good things to be thinking about because it sneaks up on you yeah. and, and then you're, well, in, what happens when you let stuff like that sneak up on you is you just pay more. Exactly. Right? So like in August when everyone's air conditioning is struggling, the AC guy's like, dude, I mean, I can't even get to you for two weeks right. or, and then here comes the fun part, you know, you can pay our after hours premium. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get parts right now, but if you're willing to pay this, I could get that. And then all of a sudden, uh, you're just, you're, you're paying the price of not being prepared. So getting ahead is always good. So I tend to be a strategic person. So when it's December, I'm thinking about January or February. Uh, that's how I roll. That's tended to be very uh, advantageous financially and strategically and otherwise. Speaking of that, I'm thinking right now about hiring three new agents on our team between our Fort Worth office and our Richardson office because I'd like to have them really up and rolling by February. And if we can get them in the door December, January, we do a six week intense training program. So if you're out there and you're thinking about getting your real estate license or you just got it or you've had it for less than 14 months, uh, go to TodTremonteTeam.com right now, call or text 214-310-0008 and let us know that you're thinking about getting into the real estate business. We might be a fit, Truth be told, we're very, very selective. But if we're not a fit, we'll help you find a place that would be a great fit. If you are a fit, man, let's start something awesome together. Text us right now, 214-310-0008. Maybe you should join the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. You should join our team because we also are homes on land experts. And we're always coming to you with the strategic ways of getting a home on land. That couldn't have sounded more boring. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on. Todd, how how do I find a home on land fast we, and easy? We are homes on land experts. I know. And I've we're got always this, like I'm getting a cold. <laughs> about the strategies and, and stuff for homes thinking. that are on the lands. Um, listen, I freaking love homes that have a bunch of space around them, right? You yes. can call it a giant yard or farm or a ranch. We can do farm and ranch, but what we're talking about here is when you have a really big backyard. It could be a half acre if it's oriented just right, but usually it's like two, three, four, five acres. We do a lot of ones, um, but the, how do you actually get that done? I feel like we get this question 157,000 times every week because it feels distant and hard for people. But it can be as simple as just deciding that's what you want. It really can be. And I say this, whether it's homes on land or homes in the most desirable neighborhoods in DFW, which are kind of our two main things, we could obviously help you with other stuff. Those are the two things that our agents really specialize in. I say this all the time. You cannot start this conversation too early, but most people start it too late. So they've been thinking about making a move. They start kind of driving around and looking, and then they call an agent when they want to be in that house in like eight weeks. 
And you can still do that, of course, but you've lost out on options. You don't have time to evaluate everything and consider everything and take advantage of every opportunity. So even if this is your dream to own a home on land someday or next year or when the kids graduate or when the kids are born or whatever, start the conversation now. Literally just call or text us. Like I want to start talking about buying a house with a big giant backyard. You can call or text 214-310-0008 or go online. Touchermoneyteam.com. It's 214-310-0008 or touchermoneyteam.com or whatever other way you want to get a hold of us. Go online, click a button, fill out a form. You'll find us. We're easy to find. 700 and something reviews, all the things. But realistically speaking, if you want to buy a home on land, you need to talk to someone that that's what they do, right? A real estate agent can technically do commercial, residential, industrial, land, condos, townhomes, all of it. But they can't be great at that right? So our team, Tatramani Home Selling Team, office in West Fort Worth, office in West Richardson, we specialize mainly in two things. The most desirable neighborhoods in DFW, uh, prices kind of 300 and up, and homes with these really big backyards. We say homes on land. And that's because we're typically talking about, you know, an acre to five acres. We could say one to 10, half to 10, doesn't matter. It's a big giant backyard. You could have a garden, an orchard, a well, a pond, room to roam. Maybe you have animals, maybe you have bicycles and go-karts and you can do all that in your own yard. You don't have to go out to do it. Maybe you've got a shop or a shed or a second home or whatever that looks like, pools, whatever. That's the kind of stuff we're into. I love this stuff. I live that way. I love helping friends and neighbors do that as well. Um, but it starts with the conversation and I would strongly recommend that you have that conversation with someone that does a good bit of this so they can help you with the nuances of what is different about this. But you could also just go to TodtramoneyTeam.com right now, start a search and start by lot size. And you put in minimum one acre, minimum two acres, whatever the case is. And then you can also cross-reference that by bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, price, zip code, county, city, you know, whatever you like, school district, whatever you like. But that's a, those are good starting places. But the big thing is to start the conversation now. If you want to be ready five years from now, great. But we offer free strategy sessions all December and especially all January where we will sit down with you for 45 to 90 minutes. doesn't cost you anything. As a matter of fact, we'll buy you a cup of coffee or a Coke or a water or whatever. Would you like a Topo Chico? Uh, we'll buy the drink and we'll sit down live in person, ideally, and answer your questions and help you gain clarity and alleviate the lack of clarity and frustration and confusion and maybe put together a game plan for the next 30 days. Or maybe it's for three years from now. We're fine either way. We'll be here whenever you're ready. But we can help you eliminate the lack of clarity and add a lot of confidence and excitement about what could happen in regard to you buying a home with a giant backyard, a home on some land. So that's where I would start. I would start the conversation now. You can start on our website and you might be living in a home on a nice chunk of land long before you ever dreamed. It really could happen very quickly and I hope it does for you. Okay, what about septic tanks? <laughs> What about them? Uh, septic tanks are more common in homes on land with bigger backyards. Um, but by the way, there are plenty of homes on land that are not rural. It's not septic tank and barbed wire fencing, right? So you right. can still get homes on land in town and near town. We love doing that. It's kind of like you get it all. Mm -hmm. But if you're a little further out, if you're on the edge of town or in the county, it's very common for people to have septic tanks to handle their you know, plumbing and sewage needs. And it's not that big of a deal. You can it's have not. them inspected. Um, you can have them uh, addressed or taken care of once a year or so. Um, there are specialists out there for that. I got a buddy, Jeff Duran, firefighter, septic guru. Awesome for this stuff. Um, and Are you on septic? Nope. We have city sewer, city water. I also have well water, but I only use it for irrigation. We use city water for the house, um, not septic. And we had above ground propane tank gas and we just switched to, you know, traditional Atmos, you know, gas line. Nice. We're all grown up. Um, there were reasons that I, parts of, I preferred the other, the tank for some reasons. This one we ended up going with when we redid the house. But anyway, the point is 
Septic should not worry you, but it should be on the list of things that you do differently when you get a home on some land that you would do with a home in the neighborhood. And again, that points to you need an expert that can explain all the differences, not just the one or two that you're thinking of, because there are many others. I think uh, something to stress is that you like for there to be a house on the land that you're that's interested in. That's an important in. part of a home on land is the home part. Yeah, that's fair. But yeah. some people are wanting land yeah. and want to put a home, but that's yeah. like, that's a great way to do it. It's harder. Yeah. But it's, you know, for some people it's way better if you have the resources and the time to find the land first and then build the home. That feels like a mountain. Yeah. We help less people do that than the other, but we still help a lot of people do that every year. We've even helped people buy, tear down and rebuild or buy and set up temporary whether that's a modular home or an RV or something for a little while, and then build. Uh, we really enjoy all those different aspects of the process. But the thing we do the most and that is the most accessible and most quickly done and probably most cost effective is finding a property that's got a house on it that is good enough. Maybe it's amazing, but it's good enough to get you out there on the land and get you into the home doing that thing. Then you could remodel or add on or tear down and rebuild or or just love the home you've got. You know, we have people that are buying their dream homes just boom, ready to go. And then of course we can help people that want to buy good enough and turn it into the dream, uh, which is the approach I've kind of taken. But it's all there and it's all, you know, within the spectrum of what we specialize in, which is helping you get to the place where you've got a great home on land that you really, really love that fits your unique lifestyle. That doesn't have to be like mine or anybody else's. Um, regardless of whether the home you buy is on land or not, we really like the idea of you having a home warranty, especially that first year. And so Super Home Warranty does a great job with getting you taken care of those basic, basic systems in your home being covered so that you can sleep better at night, make one quick phone call, pay one little trip fee, and have those basic systems taken care of. Like I say, that first year in your home especially, you'll just sleep a little better knowing uh, at night, knowing that if something goes wrong with one of those things, you just make a quick call and it's taken care of. So you can go to hellosuper.com. Uh, you can reach out to Super Home Warranty and ask for Christine Crowley. Uh, she's been taking great care of us. Super's been taking great care of us for many, many years. They've evolved and had some name changes, but that company has done a great job for my family and me and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our clients for a long, long time. Hellosuper.com. What else is on the agenda? What else do we have? Um, nothing. We're running out of time. That's it. We're out of time, Listen, people, Todd. you want to buy or sell a house? You go to ToddTramaniTeam.com. We'll get you taken care of. 